can I can see it over there. We're live. All right. Let's do it's gonna chat. do. Check in the audio. Check check. Yep. Okay. Great. Welcome everyone. Welcome to my studio today. It's turning out to be a beautiful sunny day in Portland, Oregon. So that's really, really nice. Get a nice extended um, uh, Indian summer. Well, that would be super great. Um, so I have some fun stuff planned for you today. Um, thanks again for joining me. Um, I'm going to do some, some painting and talk about what's going on um, with the website and all that, all that good stuff. The really exciting thing that we have going on today, and it was very timely, I didn't plan it, I swear to God I didn't plan it, is I got this um, in the mail yesterday. I'm included in this magazine here. Um, it seems like a long time ago that I submitted work for this, but I have two pieces in here. So these are really fun. You got, you got that, Kev? Okay, um, I did these quite a long time ago. This is a pretty large painting, and um, acrylic's just such a wonderful medium for this combina com combining detail with some more abstraction, and I really like how these turned out with the, the color fields. So these, um, yeah, so it's pretty, pretty great to be included in a magazine like this, so yeah, so. Happy about that. Happy to share that with you guys today. Um, now, the other thing that we have going on is the acrylic workshop is on sale right now through the 23rd of October. And so, get that up there, Kevin. Great. Yeah. So, Seasons in Acrylic is an amazing workshop. We're really, really proud of it. It's got 13 now, we just at, I was going to say it has 13 hours of video, but we just added a bonus lesson to it. And you can actually preview that bonus lesson on YouTube. There's a little video that, a sped up version of that lesson called Spring Wind. And it's a pretty little um, piece, I think. So that's now been added to the Seasons in Acrylic workshop. So it's I think just about 14 hours of video. It's a really pretty wonderful in-depth workshop um, that covers, um, that takes you through a little journey of the seasons in acrylic. So um, check that out on the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com. And um, there's all, of, all kinds of other um, workshops. And of course, the monthly pastel painting lessons are there too. So the thing that I wanted to talk about first today, oh yeah, I just needed to, needed to show. So along with the workshop is a really, really in-depth PDF that's over 80 pages. So it's, a, I think, a really valuable resource um, about acrylic painting. So that comes with the workshop. So, but one, one thing I did want to talk about was paint today, acrylic paint, before I get started painting myself because there's a lot of nomenclature about acrylics that can be kind of confusing and there's so many, it's such a vast array of acrylic paint available on the market, lots of different brands. So I have a couple, several different brands um, pictured here um, starting with uh, Liquitex and the confusion kind of comes in because in my workshop I talk about basic acrylic paint. And I'm referring to just regular basic acrylic, not basic. See, this is called, this is their line. This is the name of their line. It's called Basics, <laughs> which um, I just wasn't really paying attention to. But I'm not referring to this particular line of paint in the workshop. But what I want to talk about is in acrylics, there's all these different um, viscosities. So basic acrylics is just, just that, the, the, what you think of coming out of the tube. And then there's heavy bodied acrylics, which is a little bit thicker. Now this is Liquitex heavy bodied. 
And then, then there's fluid acrylics, which is this kind of thing. And this is golden brand. And what makes it even more confusing is they say fluid acrylics, and then they say high flow acrylics. So they have all these different um, verbiage and names for different kinds of paint. And then there's acrylic inks, which are even a little thinner. So these kinds of acrylics are really, really cool and great for underpainting for. The reason I have them primarily is for underpainting for pastels. So I use these. Now let's just take a look at the difference in the paint. So then, then there's Dick Blix, or Blix paint. This is their line of paint right here. And it comes in different viscosities as well. This is the studio line, which is basically student grade. And this is their regular line. This is studio. So I have all these different kinds of paint. Um, I'm really buying more for color when I'm out there buying and, and what's available when I'm at the store. That's kind of what I'm doing. And then there's golden. And again, they have the different viscosities in golden. This is the Utrick line, which is basically um, now it's Blix and Utrecht are kind of all together. Now, even in these, you, you, these look like they're the same, but they're not. This is medium body, and this is heavy body. So, um, but the thing about it, so let's take a look at the difference between medium body and heavy body. So this is a Liquitex, and this is just Blick. They're, I'm gonna call it regular. And then let's take a look at the difference here. So you can see there, there is a little bit of difference in viscosity, I would say. And of course, the different pigments are going to have a little bit different viscosity between even if it, you buy the exact same line because the pigments are made up of different stuff. But let's just take a look at different. So see that? It's pe it peaks a little bit different. It just sits up there just a tiny little bit more than the, what I'm going to refer to as, to as the regular acrylic. See that? It's just, this one's just a little bit, I guess, thinner is what I, would, what I would say. Now let's take a look at these, what is in theory the same, same brand. So this is medium body. But again, it's hard to say because these are different colors. So there's that one. It's kind of similar to this one, right? And then let's get, oh yeah. I'll just leave the lid off because I'll probably use it. But the label, so it says medium body. Okay, and then this one is heavy body. Let's take a look. A little bit, but not. <laughs> to me, there's very little difference between these two in terms of viscosity. And again, it's going to vary depending on what, what color, what pigment it is, because they're made of different stuff. So that's, it is a little confusing, but what I would say is, most any time, any of the acrylic paint that you buy, if you add the right amount of water to it, it's going to all kind of work out. Um, so I wouldn't get too concerned and too worried about what it is that you're going to buy, especially if you're, if you're in the sort of regular or heavy body zone, that's probably good. Once you start getting into these, there is a big, big difference. So let's take a look at this. You know, that's that's just a big, big difference. So um, that's that's this is kind of a whole different animal. And so is, um, in my mind, open acrylics. I don't cover open acrylics in the workshop because I'm not a big fan, and I'm also not 
a big fan of the water mixable oils. And that's just a very personal preference. I just, um, you know, lots of people are, you know, it's that, that kind of um, landscape is changing rapidly. They're really um, getting, from what I've heard, better. So, um, you know, that's a personal thing. To me, if I'm going to do oils, I'm going to do oils. If I'm going to do acrylics, I'm going to do acrylics. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to start to open up some of my paint here. I also cover several different ways of organizing your palette and working with the paints in the workshop. I do it this way because I buy a lot of paint and, um, and I do large paintings. And so, and I also am a fan of not, of not over mixing and so I'm not too worried about my colors getting contaminated by doing it this way. So that's why, but I have several other ways that I work with acrylic paint that keeps it a little bit, that keeps the pigment a little more pure and um, you don't have to have quite as much going on um, in terms of the, the amount of paint. So I just kind of set it up like this and um, let's see today I'm going to I'm going to expand my palette a little bit from what I used last week. Last week I kept super, super limited. I'm going to remove these from my palette now. This week I'm going to let myself have a little bit more play. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to need a paper towel and I'm going to clear this paint off my and just move it around so if I want to use this I can no need for it to go to waste if I can use it I'll clean this off and just get this all set up now, I want to talk today about a couple of the paintings in the studio before I get painting. And then I'll talk about what I'm going to do today. So, yeah. Yeah, Kevin, can you give a... Oh, good. Okay. Great. So, um, let's see. Should I scoot you around there? Yeah, I'm going to scoot you around for the big painting. So you guys, so this, this, this painting that um, is hanging up here, um, it's sold, which is really cool. It's sold to some um, longtime clients of mine. They have um, quite a few of my pieces. And um, I'm really, I really love this painting. I'm going to be sorry to see it go. And I, I don't get attached to my paintings that often, but I am a little bit to this. I think it might be one of my favorite paintings that I've ever done. And the reason I think for that is, um, for one thing, it looks, it, it, it doesn't look like the photo reference at all. I pretty much made up the color palette, this color situation, almost entirely. Um, I like the freedom of it. I think it has a, a pretty gesture to it. And I absolutely love the n neutrals, that it's neutral, neutral, neutral. And then it's got the, the, the saturated sky and the little bits of saturation coming around the edges. It also has a lot of saturated color in the shadows down in here, this is a very bright, um, but very dark blue. So it's, it's got a lot of things in, in it that I, when I'm looking at other paintings that I admire, it's got a lot of that, those elements to it. So I, I'm proud of it, <laughs> and I'm going to miss it. Um, so yeah, um, that's what I like about that. 
And so I want to talk a little bit about the painting that I did last week, because I haven't finished it. So let me get that up here, Kevin. Give Kevin a chance. He's, he's got a lot to do. He's really busy in here. <laughs> okay. So a lot of people asked me, um, have I finished it? No, <laughs> I, haven't had a, I haven't had a chance to, to get it um, finished. But there, again, this one, this one has a lot of similarity, similarity compositionally to the one that I like so much. And, but different kind of color palette. So I'll be looking to get some of that into this as I move towards a fin more finished state. Um, this painting here on the wall has a lot more paint on it. So it's got more layers. So you, I'm going to be piling on the paint um, to get some thicker, some thick and thin. So some of this gets to stay thin and some of this gets thicker, like a really um, uh, where you can really see that paint layer sitting up. And I like that about painting. That's just my personal preference. I like it when I can see the paint sitting up there on the, on the canvas. That's a little bit different than pastel, right? Pastel doesn't, though you can see the little particles, the little fragments sitting up on that pastel paper, paint has the opportunity, oil paint and acrylic paint has, gives you the opportunity for us to really see the, the thickness of the paint sitting up there on the surface. So it's one of the things that I really love about painting. Um, and I think one of the things that draws me back to painting after I've been doing pastels for a bit. Okay, so let's take this down. Want to take a look at these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I just want you guys to notice that in my studio, so today as I'm painting, this piece, this little piece is not complete. But it's got some stuff in it. There's a few things that I really like about it. And it has some um, of, um, qualities in it that uh, the the different reference than I had that I'm going to be using today but it's got some things in it that I like that I see okay that's um, there's potential that I want to have in the piece that I'm doing today so I'm and and same with this one and the same with the one that I like so much okay and this is important because I'm putting I put these where I can see them as I'm painting and I do that all the time because I'm building a body of work that has a thread that carries through it and that that um, thread can be it can be the subject matter it can be the color palette it can be the technique the brushwork how or a combination of all those things but I definitely want to see that and so whether it's acrylic or oil or pastel, I'm always in my studio. If I can, if I have room and am able to do it, I'm, I put work up so I can see that, that thread and that progression. And oh, there's a little kernel of something in this one piece that I, that I want to have in the next one. So that in that way, I don't have to figure it out every single time. <laughs> And the work um, has a cohesive look, and so I have a body of work that is connected. And I think that that's nice and it's important. It's important for galleries, and it's important to me too because I, I want I want that I want to see where I'm, you know, where I've been and where I've he where I'm headed. Okay, so let's talk about today's painting. Um, so there's a few things that I like about the reference. We'll give Kevin a chance to get the reference up there for you guys and get trained on the old canvas that I'm using. Okay. So the things that I'm looking at 
in this reference, yep, um, are that it's this sort of tracery of color and the branches, the kind of tangle of the branches. I think that it's really, really attractive and beautiful. It, this is Door County, Wisconsin, where I went to teach at the Peninsula School of Art there. And I went there in October of um, 2018, I think. I think so. It's absolutely beautiful, the very height of fall color there. Uh, so uh, I just took a zillion photographs, and this was one of them. I also love the intervals of those tree trunks and the branches. There's the kind of space, the, the way they're spaced. So that'll be important as I sketch this in. I have not done a thumbnail. This is a simple composition. I'm just going to get in there and, and play and paint um, loosely. So I also think that the, the um, those branches and the, the kind of tracery is kind of like this screen. And then I'm looking through the more, looking into the meadow. And then the more, the distant, more saturated tree line in, in that distance. So that, that sort of tracery is creating this sort of mystery and intrigue that makes me, I'm drawn back to that more saturated color. So that, that sets that up really nicely. I always love that in a painting. So the value of the foreground trees and the shape, um, they're, it's kind of all in sort of an open shade a little bit, and then there's a strip of light in the saturated trees. I think that's really beautiful. I'm also going to be concentrating on the thick and thin line. So there's, you could think of these branches as line, thick and thin. So I want a, a variety of thick and thin, so thicker line and more delicate line. So that's going to be important as I move into the painting. So, uh, so I'm going to try to <laughs> try to keep all those things in mind as I'm painting. I'm also looking, I have some help. I have some things that I already like that I feel like will help me out as I move into the painting. So I think that a lot of times, you know, painters will, well, that's cheating or that's, you know, I should be able to do it without all this. But these are, this is tools that I've given myself to be able to be successful at the painting. So I want to give myself as many tools as I can. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> Why wouldn't I do that? Um, so yeah, so that's it. Um, OK, that's kind of it. That's my spiel about painting, about my painting. Now I get to paint. And oh, I did have one other spiely thing to talk, talk to you guys about. This is uh, about you guys. Um, that are painting along with me a lot. So I totally encourage you to paint along with me. I think it's awesome because maybe you're having to do things a little bit differently. You're having probably to speed up because I know I'm a pretty fast painter. And so I think it's really, really great. Um, but I, I'm, I have to say that during the, for the free live streams, I'm not talking about the monthly members. I'm talking about the for the free live streams. We get a lot of um, um, requests into the website, the support about the reference photos. <laughs> and we just can't, we, you know, the thing that you should do if you don't have a JPEG of the reference photo, just do a screen grab and get it that way. We just can't make sure that everybody that wants one has a JPEG of the reference photo. It's just we get so many um, support tickets, and um, my poor support team can't, can't, we just can't do it. But um, we're not, I'm not talking about you monthly people, because you're, you're, um, you're, you're paying for something different. But, um, but yeah, I totally encourage you to paint along. I, we just can't, we can't do that. 
So just get a screen grab. That should work. All right. Um, all right. Yeah, I'm going to start painting. Just cool. And I'll get as far as I can. I think, you know, if I can get um, a good, good sense of what's happening on there, get some, get enough, um, so that I can. What my goal today would be to get enough on here that I'm starting to get that quality of light, and you know, really feeling my like, oh, I can feel my way to the finish line. Um, if I can get something along the lines of what I did over here. Now, notice today I, I decided to use the, um, this is quinacridone magenta for, the, for toning it. And I, you know, I chose that intentionally because of the bright and um, saturated background color. Um, that was my thinking there. Again, people ask me a lot about the paper um, colors that I choose for a pastel or, or what kind of toning. And it, 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 you know, I could just as well have used the phthalo blue, which I also like, or yellow ochre. Whatever color that you use, whatever color paper, whatever color ground, that overall um, toning is going to lend color harmony because it's going to, the little bits are going to pop through throughout your scene. So um, I'm not saying it doesn't matter or I don't think about it. I'm just saying that maybe it doesn't matter, you know, as much as you, as you think. Okay. All right. So I'm going to mix up some paint to um, do some sketching with and I'm going to use some burnt umber and I'm going to use this uh, crimson. This is alizarin crimson hue and this is a really nice, I use this a lot, this kind of mix. I'm going to move this out of the way because it's kind of under my feet. And just give it a little bit of water. And I'm going to use my one of my favorite brushes. I like these long flats. This is a synthetic long, long flat. Um, let's see if I can find out what number it is. Oh, yeah, they're number 10s. And look at their, their they, they've, they've, they've seen some mileage. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you. So I printed my reference photo out twice this morning. And on the settings and my little, I have a new little photo printer, which I really like. So you can see the difference. And all, all of the differences is I chose a different paper, this uh, different paper setting. This is what I like. This is what I like about the scene, the dark kind of um, open shade looking to the light. This one didn't catch it. So, um, yeah. So, got it, you know, it makes a big difference. All right. So now one thing about this too, so this is an elong elongated format from what this is. Also, the photograph, this is right dead center. I don't want that, so I'm going to want that more about here, I think. And I'm just going to come in really playful, lots of energy. Okay, yeah. Oh, it's in the way. Okay. I'll try. Try to keep it out of the way. I'm also going to get these out of my way. And get that. I like this angle here. We have a question coming yeah. in. Um, do you ever use? 
Do you ever paint with acrylic on paper instead of canvas? Yes, I do paint. I like painting. Um, in fact, we're working on a workshop right now, and we're painting with um, acrylic on paper for it. Yeah, and I'm I'm actually um, I've been experimenting with different papers, and the one that I really like is guess what? It's pastel matte because pastel matte is really a multimedia paper. It's really a nice. It has it has a nice nice feel with the acrylic paint. Um, kind of fun. So I'm just going to get some of these. shapes in. And I don't need to get every single thing in. Just I just want the flavor of it right now. Just this feeling that there's this crazy tangle and a little bit of idea of the value of it. And I'll come back to it. This is the sort of foliage that's hanging out here. I just kind of staining the canvas. So see, already I can feel that there's this idea that not, that's a little bit like it's halfway. I want to raise it up a little bit. I don't want it quite, I don't want it to be just halfway. Now I want this guy. Got to place that. Carefully. Here's another good question. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a trick to making sure you get coverage on the very bottom part of the canvas? I find that the support gets in the way. The support. I think she means that little lip right there. Oh, I'm, I've got, so this, this canvas has a little thickness and I just put it over the edge so that I'm um, able to do that. Yeah, that is a, a thing that happens. This is really pretty sky, and I can always come around. I just want to get right now just kind of the gesture of it, and then these guys are doing some weird stuff back here, and then there's this kind of softer tree. It's kind of good back here. It's kind of acting as a so stopper, right? This right here. And then there's my tree line. So back in here. So then, then right now it's right now this this all of what I'm doing is kind of just for me. It doesn't. It probably doesn't make any sense to anybody yet. Um, Okay, um, so I need to start trying to make some sense of it. And what's the best way to do that? I think I'm going to get some of this gold back in here so I can start to feel a little bit of quality of light. And I'm letting myself have, have this cadmium yellow deep hue 
which is a color. It's Dick, Dick's, um, I'm sorry, Blick Studio. I'm saying my age here because I'm thinking it's, and I'm going to use some of this and some raw sienna. Just a quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, did you mention the size of the canvas? No, I didn't. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it, it looks, looks like, like it's a, two by. Yeah, or maybe 20 by 40. Yeah. So I'm just going to get just kind of in a, in a really cursory manner, the, this, some color back in here. More as a, like, oh, yeah, I want that. I'm going to want that. We have one comment about how the proportions of your reference photo do not match the proportions of your canvas, and you're just taking some liberties there, right? Yes, I, I said that at the beginning that, yeah, I had to, you know, that, that I'm compensating for that. Yeah, I'm not, you know, this is not, the, the idea here is not to paint the, you know, the reference as is. All the things that I mentioned when I started that I, that I like about the photo, that's really what it's about. It's not really, you know, painting this paint, this, this scene. It's about getting those qualities that I like about it into a painting. And we also had a comment about how you're leaving your acrylic jars uncovered. Yes. It's just because the weather permits that right now. I would do that. It would permit it no matter what because there's so much paint in those jars that it, they, they won't dry out. Even in the dead of summer, they won't, these won't dry out because of the volume of the, of the paint that's in them. So I can do that. And if it's really a hot day, and I'm out here for a long time, I just do this. And that's it. And it'll, they stay really, really good. But um, at the end of it, if it's a hot day, or even you know today, at the end of it, I'm going to want to make sure that I you know, put those lids back on for sure. So I'm just going to get some. So I'm just, again, just kind of staining some color in that I know I'm going to want in here. Kind of first pass. And does it matter that your drawing might not be fully dry? It doesn't matter, that not at this stage. Not to me, it doesn't. I like, you know, that I've got this sort of pool of paint to come along and mix with.
so this is going to be kind of cool. Um, all right, so now just so I can get a little sense of what's going on here, I think I'll get some sky in. And guess what, you guys, I'm doing that more for you <laughs> than me because right now I'm fine with it being an absolute, you know, kind of un unintelligible uh, mess of whatever because um, I kind of like that. I kind of like it that it's at this stage of the game. I, I just want to throw on color and shape and um, s stain the the painting, knowing that I'm going to come back over and over. This this one over here just is a whole process of going, you know, putting something down and then, you know, then painting over it and putting something else down and painting over it. Oh, actually, there's one other thing I want to do before I do that. I wanna, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get this light area in here. Kind of. Um, This is kind of interesting because it's light and then it, it skips over. I have another question. Huh. Do you have any recommendations uh, to use to sketch in your composition on canvas if you don't feel comfortable doing it in paint? Buying charcoal, graphite, that kind of thing. Oh yeah, you can, you can yeah, you could do it in almost anything. Um, Probably not vine charcoal because vine charcoal is going to, you know, basically it's it's water soluble. It's going to mix with the paint. Um, so I probably wouldn't. I I personally wouldn't probably do that. I would probably use um, pencil. It's gonna. It's still also going to mix a little bit, but the vine charcoal is really going to, you know, um, show up in a particular way. Um, that I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't enjoy. Um, let me see. I'm going to get something in there for the sky. I like, I like that gray sky, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to pump it up a little bit and give it some phthalo and add, settle it down just a little. So I can always come back in and give it a little more gusto if I want. Now I can come also over the top these uh, some of these branches I'm going to want, but I, I maybe want to pick out a few with negative shapes going forward so that I get get to preserve a little bit of the that um, the pink under underpainting. So I'll pick out a few little branch ideas. Like so. Here's another question. Would the technique that you're painting in right now differ if you were using oil paint? No. Not not really. I would st if I was doing oil, I would come in with the first sort of pass layer that's staining the color and getting the the value relationships and the shapes and everything and then I would come back in with a thicker um, paint layer over the top of that. 
I would do it pretty much exactly the same. And, by the way, it's very similar to pastel because I'm, when I'm doing pastels, I'm coming in with a, a pass that I'm blocking in and I'm staying as thin as I can for as long as I can. And the same, it's the same thing. Very, very, very similar. Which is really cool. It means you don't have to figure it out every time you switch media. See, it already starts to take a little shape. There's a main. Now, just an idea here. It's not, um, not totally there. What I want to do right now is come back in with some darker um, value over these these um, trees, so that I really have a make a little bit more commitment to where they are sitting. So. Okay. Kind of a another question. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do acrylic underpaintings for an oil painting? Oh, that's a good question. I don't. I don't usually. If I mean, I'm not going to say never. Um, because I have, but usually I would do a, um, a th like a thin oil under, under if I'm going to do that. And I, I like to do, with oils, I like to do like a, um, a kind of a wiping away, like putting down some value and then wiping it away. I like doing that. It's fun. Just trying to get, trying to get this to be sort of organic, and so using a brush, a little bit of a broken, kind of jittery brush stroke. And this is, they're so pretty. They just. They're just trying to get that feel of it. And I can always come back in and, and, and get these later. But I, I'm, I'm just kind of getting some of these in just for placement right now. And I start to feel like I've created that depth of field that I, that I was, you know, looking for. Now I need to get that kind of light colored tree in there. And it's kind of uh, this color. It's kind of it's purpley. And it's leaning. That's not a bad. That's not a bad start with for that. And this one's related to it.
it's a little lighter in value. And it feels a little warmer. So I'm going to do it. And this has a little variation in there. I feel some, it's got a little light hitting the side of it. I can even already play with that idea. I'll come back to that. But, you know, I'm just giving myself some kind of signposts. Here's another good question. Mm -hmm. What do you do if you make a mistake? Oh, with acrylic, you can't make a mistake. <laughs> can't make a mistake. Would you just go over it in another color? Say if you put something down that you didn't want to keep, would you just cover it up? Oh yeah, this is this is uh, the, right now. All this is there are no mistakes right now. This is all about putting something down and covering it up again. Putting some everything, every 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 everything is open to revision and should be should be revised. It's not, there's nothing cast in stone about anything that I've done at all so far. Zero. And someone observed that you seem to be using the same brush. Yeah, I'm using the same brush. Uh, what size is that? It's a number 10 flat. And yeah, pretty much stick with it. It's my fave. You know, it's funny because we have all these brushes, right? It's there for show. <laughs> I swear. We think we're we think we're going to use them, but hardly do. All right. And you do periodically um, clean out your brush. Yeah, if I if I need to make a big shift in value and color, I'm going to clean it out. But um, but sometimes not that much because again, you know, I'm I'm kind of at this stage of the game. I'm I'm very um, um, willing and want to have the the optical mixing going on. So uh, I don't I don't i don't want to over mix the colors i want them to be um interspersed anyway so um i am fine with it being um kind of mixed together that that's a pretty color now see this is the these are rocks because this is the side of the road and the ro rocks are kind of, you know, um, this is this country road and the, ro the rocks are creating the edge of the road. But, um, so, but I'm not concerned about really that they're rocks and they look like rocks in my painting. I'm just more concerned about their value and their relationship to everything else. So... They're fine. Now I'm going to just continue on getting my guys in here. Um, and in, in between here, there's a really pretty one. And this one, it, it has a branch that reaches across. It's really important because it, it does really reach across. And it kind of creates a gesture. And it's really neat. And um, then there's these all these little little guys in here, and again the, the kind of these intervals of these is important to the painting. Over here, there, am I blocking? Kevin will probably be blocking. Maybe I'm not going to like it. That's not too bad. Okay. As long as you don't do it the whole time, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, I got to stand over here. Let's see. Um, 
Oops, that's too thick. And here there's like a kind of a cluster of them. And this tangle, I love it. I just absolutely love it. It's so pretty. And obviously, I'm not, I'm not going to paint every single one of these little, you know, branches and get it exactly like it is in the photo. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get more the, the flavor of what's in the photo. And this has these. Here's another question. Mm -hmm. Would you, ever, would you ever sketch in a different color um, similar to your blue spruce in pastel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I would. I don't have, you know, the thing that keeps painting, you know, ever challenging and ever exciting for me is that I don't, I don't, um, subscribe to a, a formula for it. I, I, I'm always trying to find, you know, new, new ways of making the marks and new ways of putting down the paint and trying to um, be as open to new media as I possibly can. Because um, uh, I, you know, I, I think that that's how we, how, that's how we get better And at the end of the painting, will you switch to a smaller brush to do details? No, I probably won't. I probably won't do a small. I might, I might, I might get some of these branches in with a smaller round at some point, but it's unlikely. What's more likely is so I, I feel like these um, branches, okay, I've got in some of these branches and um, tree trunks. What's more likely, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean, I'm going to come in with another paint layer and cut in around t some of these to make them smaller. So that's how I'm going to get my thick and thin. So now, I, you know, I see this and I think, okay, well, some of them are too thick. Well, the, re the way I get some smaller is to come cut in around. And let me see. Um, if I can show you that, I'm going to come in. One of the things I, and I've, I've talked about this in other lessons that I see and students do um, with paint is just not, just not enough paint. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta, with oils, it's with um, uh, acrylic. It's not quite as much with pastel because pastel you you really want to stay thin until the very end and then, but then it does sort of apply to pastels in a certain regard because students what they hesitate to do at the end is to go ahead and like really you know pull it pull it all together with some really thick um, um, application at the very end. So here I'm going to cut in, this, this is how I'm going to get my thicker, thick and thin, I'm going to come in. And I don't need a smaller brush. And just to clarify, um, you will post this painting when it's finished somewhere? Yeah, I will, but I don't know when it'll be finished, might guys. Be a, may, yeah. Might be a couple of weeks? It might be. I, I like it, though. So I will finish it just like I like the other one. I think it's neat. I'm in the middle of doing a, another workshop. I'm making a, a um, should we say it, Kevin? Should we, oh, should we, should we um, say what we're doing? We're so. working on a workshop that I'm calling Color Competence. And it's a really absolute deep dive into color, color, color theory tons of exercises and 
just like really helping people get a real um, grasp of all the nuances of color theory and how they apply to painting. I think there's a lot of stuff on color theory, but like how do you use that as a painter? Um, so we're working on that, and it's really intense, isn't it? Very much. <laughs> it's really, whew. It's good, though. It's, it's what I feel like people really, really need. Um, how to make great color choices and how to get that intuitive vibe going with color and you know how do you how do you do that so I'm a little distracted I'm on a mission with it though I'm really I'm really And just like I usually do, I'm kind of doing my going down the rabbit hole um, thing, which I'm trying not to do too bad because there's so much, there's so, so, so much to say that I think is going to be really helpful to people that um, I feel like, oh, I have to say that, I have to do that. And those rabbit holes can be tough. So right here, I'm trying to mix this kind of grayed, um, gray colors that I see in here in this, right, right in there. And they're very, very beautiful. Um, so I want, but they're, but I, they're also in shadow. So uh, I want to make sure I get enough of the richness um, of them. Um, And then, how do I get that kind of green? Here's a pretty straightforward question. Yeah. Do you have a preference for either working with oil or acrylic? Oh, boy. Um, well, recently, I've really just been loving the acrylic because... It just easy. It just is. <laughs> There's, you know, it just is. And I, I, you know, oil's got its, you know, absolute, you know, particular beauty, and and um, of course, it's got this rich history, and um, you know, all of that, um, which is amazing. Um, and it sits up there on the canvas in a very, you know, particular manner, which is also really amazing. But, um, you know, I have been absolutely um, digging into the acrylic. You know, when I do a workshop for people, it's not because I think, oh, I want, uh, oh, people are wanting acrylic. <laughs> When I do workshops, it's because I want it. Um, and, and I think it's awesome. Um, and, uh, that's, and, I, and that sounds like super selfish, um, but it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm driven by what, I, what, what I'm working on usually. Um, so that's, you know, I was, I was on a... Um, a, an oil bent for a while, and then I got I got I got the acrylic bug. I tell you. So here, this is a good example of layering of the color. So I'm gonna put, and I'm gonna go back to putting down a little bit darker, warmer layer. See this this here, and um, then layer over the top of it with some of this other stuff. So this earth gets all these 
cool because it, it is. Look at all the look at all the leaves and all the you know, earth tones under there, and then the little sparkling leaves that are sitting on top. It, you know, there's a lot of lot to it there, and so I'm trying to um, capture that in paint, just the the thickness of the paint and the application of the paint gets to say something about the earth and um, what that's so amazing to me is an artist that some something that you can put even with line when you're drawing I, I've been doing a lot of drawing lately too like that you can put down something with line and it says something about the the wind or the sky and how it feels and that's we can make that symbol in it's just fascinating to me and uh, just to clarify about the color workshop it applies to all mediums yes the color workshop is going to be for everybody that paints draws designs anything anybody that is when if color is in your life that workshop is going to be um, valuable I think it's it's for everyone um, and also um, how do you get rid of your dirty water from the acrylic paints um, unfortunately I you know I put it down the drain yeah, it yeah. has to go down the drain. Where else is it? You could you could put it in the toilet. Um, you could do that. In the yard, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I don't want to put it in my <laughs> yard. Um, it has got acrylic. Yeah. What time are we? Oh, okay, we're doing getting there in time. Okay, I think I'm going to do a couple more things just to pull it together just a teeny bit more to show you where I'm headed value-wise because I've been I've been really playing in here and I'm going to continue to do that. I'll just kind of pack on the paint. Just really pack on the paint like um, this one. This one's a little further along in that regard. See how thick the paint is? So that's that's where I'm headed with this. I'm not there yet. Now, see, if I was, if I was on my own, <laughs> if I didn't have you guys watching, I would be moving like probably twice as fast, and I would be using twice as much paint, because I, um, but I would be um, also kind of doing you guys a disservice because I, I wouldn't be able to show you. Um, but I would be moving twice as fast. I would be like, boom, and I'd have my music on, and I'd be rocking and rolling, and um, going like this, like getting this on here really fast, and letting the activity, like the energy of the of of my my energy of moving be part my energy and moving the paint around and being over here and let the, so that becomes part of the painting in a different way than the demos um, typically do and so that's just you know the fact of it not you know not anything that I'm trying to keep from you or not do during a demo but that just is the way it is because when I'm doing a demo I'm talking to you so would you say that this is still an underpainting or you're moving into are you moving um, into painting? I, yeah I mean it's kind of right in it's kind of right in between I'm going to start to get, you know, this kind of action in here. Pull out some of these things that I want and, you know, decide.
Um, one thing I'm a little undecided is how much how, how much of these light colored leaves I'm going to want in here. I'll probably get to a point where I try some and then decide whether I like it and then you know if I don't like it I'll back off. Let's see. But yeah, you should check out the acrylic workshop. It's on sale. Um, until the end of the month and it's it is a great workshop I think it's our best workshop so far um, really I'm really really proud of it yeah actually till the 23rd so not quite the end of the month it's on sale until the 23rd so we have, we, we have special um, special dates that we hit with our sales that are um, mean stuff to us. So it's not it's not absolutely random. It sounds like it's random, but okay. Okay. I think that's neat. I think it's gonna be really neat when it gets all comes together a little bit more. But can kind of see the direction of it, I think, which is cool. Good. So now be, um, I'm probably going to stop working on this for the day. So I'll go ahead and put my lids back on. And I try to get the lids that are the right lids, but I don't even really worry about that. And um, I get these all tucked away for the day. Clean out my brushes really, really, really well. That's one thing. Because I have those special brushes that I are um, uh, um, uh, that I use all the time, I make sure that I clean them out really, really, really well um, and get all the paint out. And um, the other thing is, you don't want to use water that's too, too hot with the brushes because that. Um, the hot water breaks down the glue in the in the little ferrule that holds it together. So you don't want to um, use too the you don't want to use hot water. Oh, I got paint on me. Um, so I'm gonna have to clean off my hands. But yeah, the 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 other really great thing about acrylic paint. Um, pain is that um, it is non-toxic and it is water soluble. The only thing about that, that um, the other property is that it dries really fast so you, can't, you don't want to get it, um, you don't want to leave it in your brushes because it, your brushes will wind up being you know just hard as a rock and on your clothes I do, I am a little bit more careful with my clothes with acrylic paint because if it gets on there, you can get it off. It's water soluble, but you have to get it off before it dries. Otherwise, you're pretty stuck with it, and it's really difficult to get off. So there's that. Whereas with oil paint, you can get it off even after you know quite a long time. But, all right, guys. Well, thanks for joining me today. I, I had fun painting for you. I hope you really enjoyed it. I um, hope you check out the acrylic workshop on the website, past, um, paintinglessonswithmarla.com. And those of you that have already purchased it, we just added a new lesson to it. And if you haven't, um, you can check out the little um, promo videos. We have a couple. There's a commercial that tells all about it. And then we just added um, a little sped up version of one of the lessons, which I think is kind of sweet. So um, check it out. And again, thanks for joining me. I so appreciate it. I so appreciate my um, fans and supporters and all you guys on the chat that chime in and answer questions. We, we appreciate that too. And I hope you have a lovely, lovely rest of your weekend. 
Um, it's only Saturday. So, okay. All right. See you guys soon. Bye.